Welcome. In this video, we will walk through the steps to connect an InSight Snap to a Siemens PLC. We will be using a Siemens Somatic S7-1200 PLC with TIAA version 15. Before we begin, make sure that you are connected to your InSight Snap and have set up your application. If you need assistance with connecting or setting up your sensor, please refer to the InSight Snap training video series. This video will cover the following steps of the process. Preparing the InSight Snap for PLC connection. Configuring the PLC to see the InSight Snap. Search and connect the InSight Snap to the PLC, rungs, and why they are important. Example of manually triggering the InSight Snap sensor using PLC. Example of auto-triggering the InSight Snap sensor using a PLC, as well as an overall review of the process. Let's begin by discussing what is used to connect the InSight Snap to the PLC. To begin preparing the InSight Snap for the Siemens PLC connections, we will first set up the appropriate communications. On the home page, click the Manage Communication Settings button to open the communication settings. Navigate to the Communications tab. Here you will find the available protocols. Select ProfiNet by clicking the radio button. Toggle the inputs and output switches under the device I.O. header. These switches allow the InSight Snap to send and receive data and communicate with the PLC. Next, toggle the traffic control radio button on. Next, in the station name field, we will enter IS Snap. This is the name of the InSight Snap that the user will enter in the Siemens TIA portal. Once the information is set, click the Apply button. Now ProfiNet should be running properly. The final step is to change the trigger type from self to single for the PLC. Navigate to the step five, finalize tab to set the trigger. The default trigger type of self will trigger the InSight snap continuously based on the set trigger interval. The single trigger will trigger from an external source, such as the PLC or a discrete input. The setup of the InSight snap should be complete. The sensor is set to communicate on ProfiNet. It will receive triggers from and send data to the PLC. Switch back to the monitoring view and proceed to the Siemens PLC setup. Next, navigate to the TIA portal to get started. The first step is to download a GSD file, a bitmap, and the example program from cognex.com. To install the GSD file with a brand new program file, open the Options tab and select Manage General Station Description, GSD Files from the list. A new window opens displaying the downloaded GSD file. Check the box next to the file and click the Install button. Once installed, click the Close button. Once the GSD file has been installed, the hardware catalog will update. Once the update is complete, the window will close and you will be directed back to the main screen. To confirm ProfiNet is running and the device can be seen on the network, locate and expand the Online Access tab, find the Ethernet Adapter tab, and expand the drop-down menu. The InSight Snap sensor is found on the same IP address that was being used previously. Expand the Snap folder and click the Online and Diagnostics button to open. This allows us to see that the InSight Snap has connected successfully. Details found in the hardware catalog include firmware version number, serial number, diagnostic status, and channel diagnostics. You can also change the InSight Snap's IP address under the Functions tab. We will use the PLC project that was downloaded from Cognex.com and the GSD file. Click the Project menu and then click Retrieve. Locate and click on the downloaded project file to open and store it in a folder. Once the project file is stored, Navigate to the InSight Snap folder under Devices and click Device Configuration to see the PLC. Next, click the PLC icon. Then click the Network View tab to see that the InSight Snap sensor is connected to the PLC on ProfiNet. When looking at the device on ProfiNet, there are settings that need to be set up initially to communicate. The PLC project typically will default to the first option, setting the IP address in the project. Change this to the IP address is set directly on the device option. We do this because we set the station name and IP address earlier in the process. You also have the option to specify IO cycle time. Select the Set Update Time Manually option 
and set the update time option to 16 milliseconds to account for the speed needed for updates to occur between the InSight Snap Sensor and PLC. We have now set up everything on the PLC side with the InSight Snap Sensor and the GSD file that was imported. You will notice that six modules were created when adding the device. These modules are Acquisition Control, Acquisition Status, Inspection Control, Inspection Status, Command Control, and Results, 64 bytes. Note that by navigating through the Properties, System Constants tabs, you can see that each module has a three-digit hardware identifier for the PLC's ladder logic. For example, the hardware identifier for the Acquisition Control module is 278. Now we can open the PLC project and view the PLC network ladder logic available to use. Navigate to and expand the SNAP 1211C folder drop-down. Expand the Program Blocks folder drop-down and click the main OB1 button. A list of runs will appear that will be used to control the PLC triggering. Runs are ladder logic elements which make up a run routine that is part of the main task scan. It updates with input and output data. It can read inputs and set outputs from the PLC. When the six modules were created, new data types were mapped that automatically generate within the PLC data types folder. With the new data types created, new tags will also be available within the PLC tags folder. Navigate to and expand the PLC tags folder drop-down. Click the Show All Tags button. This page displays the tags that have been created. There are six networks. Each network has a specific functionality, which is shown as a comment under each title describing what it does. The gray instruction boxes perform simple functions and operations. The instruction boxes in networks 1 and 2 have hardware identifiers that allow copying the module data into or out of the PLC tags previously created. Let's look at network 1. This network is used to copy all status and result info from the InSight Snap Profi Net modules into the PLC. For the first box, the hardware identifier is 281, which corresponds to the acquisition status module. This box operation is to copy the acquisition status information from the InSight Snap into the PLC tags defined using the ACK status data type. RETVAL is used to show if data was copied successfully. The other boxes in Network 1 copy the module data for inspection status, command status, and the inspection results into the tags defined for them. Now that everything has been set up properly, you can now use the PLC with the InSight Snap. A PLC can now be used to trigger the InSight Snap sensor. Within the Siemens TIA portal, we will test the trigger by navigating to the Network 4 rung. Network 4 is the rung used for automatic or manual triggering. To activate the trigger, click the Monitor Mode button on the top toolbar to enter Monitor Mode on the TIA portal. Right-click on Manual Trigger to open the options list. Click Modify and select Modify to 1 to trigger the InSight Snap Sensor once. To repeat the manual trigger, select Modify to 0, then reselect Modify to 1. This will trigger once. When looking at monitoring view on the InSight Snap UI, we can see that the PLC is triggering the sensor to capture that new image from one new inspection. Now we will show an example of auto trigger. Navigate to Network 3. The auto trigger time interval will be set up in this network. For this example, the time interval will be set to trigger twice each second. Then navigate back to Network 4 and right click on auto trigger. Expand the Modify option, then select Modify to 1 to auto-trigger the InSight Snap Sensor. Now auto-triggering is activated. You will notice on the InSight Snap's monitoring view that the sensor is consistently triggering. To monitor live input and output data while auto-triggering, navigate back to the Snap Part Results watch table. You will see the data updating live with every trigger, these detailed data results include true-false trigger status, application type, inspection status code, and confidence level of the inspection. For this inspection, the application type is value 1, which refers to the anomaly detector that we are using for this program. 
the inspection status code value is zero, which refers to a valid inspection. The snap auto trigger status value is true since the program is using auto trigger. You can control both manual and auto triggering by switching to the snap watch table. An example would include turning off auto trigger. This is all you need to do to get communications and data running between the Siemens PLC and the InSight snap sensor. To review, in this video we covered the following. Getting the InSight snap ready for the PLC connection. Configuring the PLC to see the InSight snap. Search and connect the InSight snap to the PLC. Example of manually triggering the InSight snap sensor using PLC. Example of auto-triggering the InSight snap sensor using a PLC. The Siemens PLC and the InSight snap are now connected. You can now set the PLC to trigger your InSight snap. Enjoy the InSight snap sensor and its integration with Siemens PLCs. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.